there are two different kinds of word of mouth referral. There is immediate word of mouth referral and there is ongoing word of mouth referral. Immediate word of mouth referral takes place right after you experience a product or a service for the very first time. So for example, you might read an interesting book or you might watch an entertaining movie and right after that experience for the following days or in some cases even weeks, you're excited about the experience and you're more likely to share and recommend it to other people who might also enjoy it. Now, ongoing word of mouth referral is what takes place after this initial excitement wears off. So months later or even years later, you might continue to recommend a certain product or service in some situations. And that's what we really wanna focus in on here. Now, one of the most powerful ways to increase ongoing word of mouth referral is to link your product or service with relevant triggers as explained in Contagious by Jonah Berger. The idea here is to identify environmental or situational triggers that relate to how someone might use your product or service and then to create an association between that trigger and your particular solution. So a great example of this would be podcasts. Many people listen to podcasts when they're on their commute or when they're out for a walk or perhaps while they're preparing or drinking coffee early in the morning. And as a result, popular podcasts that understand this premise will often include these kinds of keywords in the title of their podcast. So for example, comments over coffee or the daily commute or something along those lines with the idea of creating a link between this recurring natural trigger and their particular product or service, in this case, the podcast. So by creating this kind of a link, we create an opportunity where the person that might be familiar with our podcast has ongoing recurring triggers in their life that can cause them to be reminded of the product or service and be more likely to share and recommend it with other people. Another great example of this would be KitKat. In their advertisements and in their TV commercials, they try to make an association between the KitKat candy bar and drinking coffee. Because again, drinking coffee is a recurring daily trigger for many people that might be interested in also consuming a chocolate bar. So by putting the two together in their commercials, they're trying to create a link. So whenever you go to make your coffee or go to drink your coffee, you're more likely to think about Kit Kat and thus more likely to buy one, consume one, or potentially recommend it to somebody else even just perhaps by sharing part of your KitKat bar with them. Now, it's important to strike a balance between the frequency and relevance of a trigger and the strength of the connection or association that you're able to create. So in other words, just because something is an environmental trigger that occurs regularly in your target audience's lives doesn't necessarily mean that it's available for you to link to your brand. If a bunch of other podcasts out there are using the word commute, then it's gonna be that much less effective for your particular podcast. So you wanna think about environmental and situational triggers that ideally are frequent and are a natural part of the everyday lives of your target audience, but that ideally are not yet strongly linked with other products and services. 